Hello, I'm Liam, and we are playing Four Against Darkness. Uh, Throck, Elric, Blesk, and Jim have leveled up to five, uh, except for Throck. He's still four, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. <laughs> uh, but that means we can move to Expert Rules, Tier 2, Four Against the Abyss. So... I um, had a read through of Four Against the Abyss and Four Against Darkness. Uh, I read through very carefully. I took a lot of notes. I felt like I was uh, missing a lot, and I was. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, or, or making a lot of mistakes or getting, uh, getting um, some crucial things uh, messed up along the way. So, um, what I've got here today, I think we'll just take a flip through of the mistakes I've been making consistently. Um, what else? Some house rules and uh, and then we'll take a look at the new features in Four Against the Abyss. Some very cool stuff in there and then I'll talk about the plot. Um, we begin with that prison break and then our party has been um, in debt to the Divigna Marcias. That's a patron from greedy gifts of the guild masters we've been working our way up and faction there trying to pay down our debt um it's gonna get worse before it get, <laughs> before it gets better uh but there's some there's some one of the features in four against the abyss is uh, some plot ideas so we're gonna use a couple of those so um mistakes i've made let me pull up here we go so this is one I don't see people talk about a lot, and I was really surprised to see it. Um, and uh, so here, uh, the abilities uh, may not be right. XP rolls for minions are at minus one. So, in the core rules, uh, every time you beat a boss, you make an XP roll. Every 10 encounters with minions that you defeat, you can also make an XP roll. But it says here that XP rolls for minions are at minus one. I don't, um, it's not in the summary at the end of this book, uh, and I haven't really seen people talk about it. Maybe everybody else said, maybe it's just a given. But I was not doing that. Um, so that's one thing. Defense rolls must exceed the target number. So um, I had been treating this sort of like uh, other game systems I'm familiar with, where basically if there's a target number, you have to meet it or exceed it. That is true for attack rolls, but not for um, defense rolls. So, and there's a couple of other, I have, a, have some notes here. Defense rolls and XP rolls must exceed their target number. I think we knew that about XP rolls, but defense as well. And I'm pretty sure I consistently made that error. Um, that means if something's attacking me, and it, let's say it's level 5, I need to roll a 6 to defend it against it, not just a 5. That may have changed some outcomes along the way. Um, uh, another rule, I don't think I really did this wrong. I just played pretty fast and loose with the idea that, uh, wizards, clerics, and elves, we don't have a wizard, but clerics and elves need one free hand to cast a spell and changing weapons forfeits one attack. So, um, Blesk and Elric, uh, may have had some attacks they weren't able to make along the way because they needed to take a turn to change their weapons. So I'm going to try to be more careful with that going forward. Uh, another feature in the core rules that I ignored almost um, completely or didn't fully understand is the whole hatred mechanic. Elves, uh, let's see if we can pop elves. Elves. Elves hate orcs. Orcs hate elves. That means that uh, elves get a bonus to attack. I don't see it on this page. Here we go. Um, an elf has a plus one to his attack or spell roll when fighting orcs, including orklings and orc brutes and other monster with the word orc in <laughs> its name. So I have that marked down on Blesk's uh, character sheet. But 
The other thing that it does, uh, orcs hate elves, and so an elf will not go unattacked. Um, so if there aren't, let's say there's three orcs attacking us, uh, one of them will definitely target Blesk. The other thing that will happen is, let's say there's five orcs attacking, um, everyone will get attacked once, and Blesk will get the extra attack. She's prioritized for the extra attack. So um, again, I don't, I don't think that would have caused a lot of changes to the way I've been playing, but I'm going to try to pay more careful attention to that going forward. Um, crushing weapons hit skeletons at plus one. I don't think I really paid attention to that. I have marked down on Elric's sheet that he, um, that he has a, a bonus against undead. But uh, sling bullets count as crushing weapons, hammers are crushing weapons, etc. So another thing I'm going to try to pay more attention to. Um, Blesk, uh, she is my, let me hide this uh, so you can see it. Blesk here, she is my lantern carrier. There's a, these cool character sheets I have a little checkbox for a lantern. Blesk is my lantern carrier. Um, and but I had been having her use a bow. A bow is two-handed. She can't use a bow and hold the lantern. So I've swapped out her bow for a sling. The downside there is that a sling is minus one. The upside is she could be carrying around her sling and still be able to cast a spell without um, changing weapons if uh, if that um, if that matters. Uh, so that's a, that's a mistake I was making with Blesk. And then by far the character I made the most infractions, the most serious infractions, poor Throck. There's a number of things here. Um, Eric in the comments pointed out uh, he can't carry, he, he would get an encumbrance penalty for carrying two two-handed hammers. There's an issue there. Um, characters can carry three weapons, but uh, two-handed weapons count as uh, two weapons. So um, this would be this would count as four weapons, and so he'd get a minus one to defense while he's doing that. Now I can't go back and change things, but there's a solution that presents itself in um, four against the abyss that I'll I'll get to soon. Uh, what else? I gave Throck those super cool, uncomfortable uh, magic metal shoes. The problem is Throck is a barbarian and they will not use magic. So that can't go on. And um, also Throck can't use potions. I don't think he ever did, uh, but I've been having him carry one. So that needs to go away. Okay. So I think that was what I found that were the most consistent mistakes that I was making. I'm sure there are others. There's other errors along the way, like in that last encounter in the last dungeon, the goat men were supposed to attack at a higher level, and I just forgot that. I think I was, so. Um, I'm sure there were other things along the way like that, but these are the most egregious things I think because I was doing them over and over all along the way and so i'm gonna try to fix those going forward um what else uh in terms of readied weapons i wanted to say uh, i said i wanted to pay more attention to uh, switching weapons and that taking a turn my what i'm going to do is instead of uh, micromanaging every turn who has what weapon equipped i think what i'll do is i will assume that uh, we've got melee equipped in the front and spells and ranged in the back um, and then if we're retracing our steps since wandering monsters attack from the rear we'll have melee equipped in the back um, and ranged in the front. Uh, so that's my plan. Um, encumbrance, uh, that minus one to defense if you're encumbered. There's some other, uh, in addition to the weapon limit, there's a 200 gold piece limit. I, I, I don't think I ever topped that. My assumption is 
uh, again, rather than micromanaging who has what, um, what I'm going to do is assume all the treasure is distributed evenly. And then if somebody gets turned to stone, I will roll randomly to see which specific items they had. They'll have an even amount of gold, but let's say there were four gems. So I'll roll randomly to see which gem they were holding. Uh, that's my that's my plan for dealing with encumbrance. Um, clues and secrets. I have a plan there uh, that we'll, I'll deal with if we, if and when it comes up. And then uh, I do have my house rule for XP rolls. Uh, for each failed roll, that character gets a cumulative plus one on the next attempt. So. If they're trying to level to five and they roll a four, the next time they roll, they get a plus one. If the next time they roll, they fail again, the third time they roll, they'd get a plus two, and that sort of thing. Um, the way it can take, just as, you, as we saw uh, in the first 19 episodes of this um, campaign, Throck... <laughs> just had a heck of a time leveling up so that that'll hopefully uh hopefully i think alleviate some of that pain uh we'll have to play with that a little bit that might get overpowered actually and there's a new feature in four against the abyss uh, that uh that so I'll, um we'll play that by ear um speaking of four against the abyss Let's take a look at that. I think what we'll do is just thumb through here. I want to show you some of the some of the cool new stuff. Um, there are some rules about when you can enter the abyss, and I'm going to use this rule here. Here, let me. Whoop, there we go. You pay 500 gold pieces in training costs per character at the end of the adventure. Basically, the the default rule is. Um, you everybody reaches level five and then they accumulate an extra xp roll um so you have four accumulated xp rolls and everybody's level five and then you're you're ready to go you just go into the abyss um to shortcut that a little bit you can do this you pay 500 gold piece in training costs per character um so that'll be we will add two grand <laughs> to our party's debt i forget what we're at um, this was the sneering sewer. Our starting debt was 4,000, and I think we came away with about 500 gold, so we're down to about 3,500. Um, but we're gonna add another two, <laughs> add another two grand uh, of debt. Oh well. And uh, we also have Throck, who never made it to level 5. But there is a uh, an optional feature in 4 Against the Abyss. Uh, between adventures, you can pay 100 gold piece per level um, and make an XP roll. So I'm just going to say Throck is level 4. I'm going to say we pay 500 gold and we get him to 5. So we're going to actually add 2,500 gold pieces worth of debt. Which will bring us to a cool six grand, I think. That's what I'm doing. Um, what else is on here? Let's see. So that's entering the abyss. Uh, I I am impressed with uh, Andrea, the author and the uh, the you know the inventor of Four Against the Darkness, um, has done all the illustrations in this, and some of the illustrations are are just uh, phenomenal. So, wait, let me see here. This is really cool. So, I'm just more and more impressed with the developers of Four Against the Darkness and Four Against the Abyss, but back to what we were doing. The features, we've got um, rooms with multiple bosses, We've also got a scenario where you can have a boss with minions. They can be combined. The interesting thing with minions is that in a corridor, you can't attack the leader until um, all the minions are dead. If In a room, if you kill the leader, uh, the minions make a morale roll to see if they run. What else? Multiple bosses. You can face two bosses at a time, and you basically split the party. 
um, two folks, probably uh, Throck and Elric, will attack one boss, and Blesk and Jim will be on the other. And as soon as one one of the duo defeats their boss, they can join the other one. But until then, um, they're basically uh, too focused on their boss to help each other. So that could be very challenging. Uh, hordes of minions. Let's see. Secrets. There's a new set of secrets in the abyss. They cost four clues each instead of three. Um, expert skills. This is a, this is huge. So when you spend an XP roll in the core rules, you level up. In four against the abyss, you can use an XP roll instead of trying to level up. You can try to learn an expert skill. And there are some super, super cool expert skills. Uh, acute hearing. Let's see. You can listen at a door and get a sense for what's there. Arcane tanner. You can make dragon skin clothes out of the skins of dragons that you wear. Um, combat acrobatics. Um, bless could do elves vault in the air over their friends. Meaning you can change your marching order, um, in, for example, in a corridor or something if you need to. Continual light, clerics can uh, cast light on something and that replaces your lantern or just turns your lantern into a backup. Um, what else? There's just a ton of stuff here. Dead shot in, uh, increases, lets you re-roll a failed attack roll with a, with a ranged weapon, so slings and bows. Dragon Slayer's Strike, that's going to be, anything related to dragons is going to be important for what I've got planned. Um, Quick-Footed Scroll Maker, this is awesome. Wizards, Elves, and Characters, uh, Characters, Wizards, Elves, and Clerics can, before a new adventure, spend 80 gold and basically store a spell on a scroll. Um, other classes could cast those spells, but I'm thinking of it in terms of um, you only have so many spell slots, uh, but they could bake uh, one of their spells onto a scroll and then use it, have an extra scroll, have an extra spell slot ready. That's the way I'm thinking about it. Shield Bash. Um, our only character with a shield is Elric, uh, but I just love this idea. Um, the skill may be used by a warrior. I may have to switch Jim to shield, to uh, sword and shield just for this ability. This is basically a reaction, like in uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5e, where if you get hit, um, you can you can take an action that uh, you hit them with your shield, basically. Um, just a ton of cool stuff here. Uh, vampire hunter. We may meet some vampires. Um, and so on. Let's see. Expert spells. There's six new spells. Healing Surge and Fallible Missile. You may recognize the idea of that one. Um, life Force Control. A wizard can, and I'm assuming elf, can exchange their health to heal another person. Mass Teleport. So we have a, we have escape scrolls. Um, you can just, as a Instead of rolling defense, you can just teleport to the dungeon's entrance. But mass teleport lets a wizard, or an elf, I suppose, uh, take the whole party. But you take damage if you do that. So you may not be able to take the whole party. And um, let's see. Friends left behind are killed by the dangers of the dungeon. So, um... Aura of Terror forces a morale roll. Reverse Gaze. This lets you turn, for example, a Medusa's, uh, Medusa's Gaze back on the Medusa. So the Medusa can turn to stone. Uh, hirelings. Another huge... Okay, this is huge. Uh, we've got two types of Hirelings. You have Retainers, which actually come on the adventure with you. And Professionals, which are... Um, services you can use between adventures basically so and there's a number of different types of each uh, for example you could hire a lantern barrier and so that would free up um, that would free up bless because she would no longer be our lantern carrier and then uh, she could use a bow so 
Now, the lantern carrier, uh, all these hirelings, these retainers, take a spot in your marching order. Um, and so you have to actually put them there. And they can take damage uh, and they can be killed. So I don't, a lantern bearer sounds really tempting, but he only has two life. And uh, I, f I feel like he's gonna be dead so fast. So um, well, I think they're also level zero. And so uh, if they take any hits at all, they're gone. So I don't, I, I'm gonna have to do some thinking. The only one I'm really, uh, there's some really powerful ones related to features in the abyss, but the one I'm thinking of first of bringing along is a spear carrier. <clears throat> the spear carrier, um, is paid to carry a character shield and or weapon, not necessarily a spear. And the main idea is that they can, oh, and they can be equipped with light armor, so they can have a defense bonus. They still only have two life, so that's an issue. But the, the main feature presented here is that you don't then have to, the character whose weapon they're carrying um, doesn't have to spend a turn to switch weapons. So that is cool. The other issue would be uh, Throck could then retain both hammers. So maybe I might be hiring a spear, spear carrier to carry Throck's second two hammers, two-handed hammer. He's got this uh, masterwork two-handed hammer, which explodes on a five or a six. Oh, that's another issue. We are done with D6s for the most part. They're still sometimes we'll be rolling them. And we're now using D8s. So, um, that means instead of exploding on a 6 on a D6, we will explode on a 7 or 8 on a D8. And a Masterwork Weapons explodes on a 6, 7, or 8. So, that didn't explode. That didn't, <laughs> that didn't explode. None of these are exploding. I was hoping for... There we go. We got an explosion. Um, okay. So so I may be hiring a spirit carrier. I'll probably do that, especially on this the, our first time into the Abyss, just to see um, how that works with retainers. Uh, surgeon can heal. Okay. Between adventures, you've got a number of other also super cool. Two of, two of the coolest, I think. Alchemist, you can pay him to create potions, and he's got his whole own list of potions that do all kinds of cool stuff. The most expensive potion is this elixir of long life. Basically, if you die, uh, you will likely um, heal instead. <laughs> so, But it costs a thousand gold, so it's going to be a while before we can afford that one. Um, fortune teller. This is also super interesting. Character visits a fortune teller who gives him a palm or tarot reading. Roll, D, roll 2d8. Choose one of the results. And then during your adventure, the character may use that number rolled on that die. So you get to store a die roll and use it whenever you like. Let's see what we would get. There's an 8. So we would store up that roll. And then whenever we wanted, we could use this and explode and uh, see what happens. So, and you pay 15 gold. Now, there is a limitation on these professionals. You can only use three services uh, between adventure. So, three professionals. I will also be using the shield maker. I think um, Elric has that shield of warning that... Um, Normally, when wandering monsters attack, shields do not uh, help you. They're ignored because you're not ready. You're surprised. The Shield of Warning, though, does still work. And But there are bosses in the Abyss who can break your equipment. So that's another thing we might want to think about is carrying extra weapons. Um, but I'm also going to employ the Shield Maker. The Shield Maker um, makes your shield unbreakable. So... That's a good one. Madness. Madness is a mechanic. Um, it's triggered by certain events. I don't know what those are yet, but you can accumulate madness. And I think I think these sheets, yep, these sheets have a box for madness here. 
if your madness goes, I think it's uh, beyond your character level. It might meet or exceed. I'm not sure if it meets or exceeds or. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. If the character total madness points are higher than his level. So, yeah. So, Elric's it's five. If he gets six madness, he would run away into the dungeon, never to be seen again, carrying away all of his possessions. <laughs> so, now there are features that you can, you can bring a minstrel um, retainer who can cure one madness. You can um, hire professionals between adventures. The confessor uh, removes one madness. Uh, you also just lose one madness if you successfully complete an adventure. But that the madness can stack up. So um, training, this is an optional rule. I think I talked about that already. And then we have some other features that we'll deal with when they come up. Vampirism, the dark plague, and lycanthropy. So we could turn into a vampire. We could catch the dark plague, and that in, you can then infect others with it. Um, and you can turn into a werewolf. <laughs> so, uh, what else? We, okay, the plot. And this might be the last thing I want to point out here. It has six campaign plot ideas. And uh, one of them fits perfectly, I think, with what I want to do. Or at least when I read it, I thought, yep, this is what we're doing. So, um, should I tell you? I think I'll hold off. I'm going to do one of these, uh, two of these actually. Two of these six um, campaign plots is what's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, that's what we'll do next. And is there anything else I wanted to cover? We got all our tables. There's new bosses, new monsters. There's a whole table just for dragons. Uh, useful stuff table. Uh, enchanted banquet table. There's so much cool stuff in For Against the Abyss. Um, I, I will show you this. Let's see. Let me hide this. And, okay. Um, this is, this is an application called Obsidian. Obsidian, how, how would you describe it? it basically, it's you build your own Wikipedia, essentially. Um, this is a light theme. You can easily change the view of it. I know a lot of people love dark theme applications, so with a click of a button, we can do that. The older I get, and um, the more uh, dark themes are hard on my eyes. So if I look too long at a dark theme, the, the stuff will, it tires my eyes out and it <laughs> burns itself in. So uh, let's see if we can leave this up this way for now. So some cool things with Obsidian. When I was going through the core rules, you'll see that over here on the left, I just did my own summary in bullet points of a bunch of stuff, rules core. I have a rules folder over here. I've got my house rules, rules from the abyss, rules from the core book, and my uh, rules from supplements like gifts of the um, greedy gifts of the guild masters. And then if I click on this guy, we've got an index over here on the left. It just reads my headings and creates a table of contents. So I can click here and um, let's see. Here's my notes about leveling up. Um, leveling up while wounded. Gain one max and one current health. So just some... Um, I've got a bunch of notes to myself. Here's my spells table. But if we look at the abyss... Here's some stuff. You can make these call-out boxes, a list of expert skills. I've got my favorite expert skills listed here with the tables in Obsidian. You can just click these, and I've sorted by class, but I could sort also by the, the name of the skill. Um, I've got the page number listed there. Uh, what else do we have? We also, over on the right here, you could theoretically play, you could set all this up and play four against darkness completely within Obsidian if you wanted. This is a plugin for Obsidian called Dice Roller, and I can, for example, I click the eight-sided die over here, we'll roll a die, we got a five. So you can also do like sort of roll 2d8, keep the highest, and it'll tell you you got a seven. 
um, and so on. You could do explosions, I'm sure. You can also set up lookup tables. So this secret table over here, I could, if it's got nine things here or eight, I could do a die roll on this table and it would tell me what the result is. Um, so, so I may head that direction, but I think my plan is to still um, play on the table because I just like the I like drawing the maps and I like uh, having the physical artifacts. With that said, I have grown tired of um, drawing of rendering my maps, and so for example. I've done, uh, this is the Sneering Sewers here. This is the last one we we visited. I used a free dungeon, I think it's called Dungeon Scrawl, dungeonscrawl.app. It's by Roll20. Super easy to draw and make really cool looking um, maps. And there's features there. There is a premium version you can pay for, but everything you see here was free. So, and then I added my own little like ledger feature down there. There at the bottom so and then I can keep I can keep this as my journal so the sneering sewers what date I played it or at least what date I entered <laughs> entered it in here the mission the dungeon feature was a natural fog and then the result so that's enough for me um, so that uh, yeah that's obsidian that's four against darkness very excited to be heading into uh, expert rules tier two uh in this campaign plot um that i have in mind so yeah we will soon enter the abyss until then friends keep your lanterns lit and your hearts warm thanks for watching